Alongside pies, there's been another constant in the Radfords family. Babies. Sue spent more than 16 years pregnant. Who is it? I can't remember her not being pregnant. From the mid-90s to the early noughties, they had another child nearly every year. Can't imagine it. I think she's just going to carry on. But in 2004, after their ninth child, James, they called it quits. Noel had a vasectomy. Sort of peer pressured into having it, it snipped in the first place. And then we just weren't happy, were we? Yeah. Because we thought, well, that's it now. We can't have any more children if we want to. So we just stuff that. As a couple, you can't always listen to your friends. You've got to do what's right for you. No booked a reversal with a specialist and the couple were back to business. The success rate for having it done within the first, was it within the first two years? Yeah, something? I thought it was 12 months, yeah. Was quite a lot higher than if you left it after the two years, Yeah, the it? Yeah, the su success rate of it working yeah. was higher the sooner mm. you had it done, wasn't it? Yeah, we didn't really mess around, did we? No. You just wouldn't be here if Mum and Dad stopped at nine. No, I can't imagine what life would have been like had he not had it reversed. It's weird to think that so many of my siblings just wouldn't be here. Baby. No, it's not. No, I don't like that thought. Dr Wilson, who performed the reverse vasectomy, has sadly passed away. But today, Noel and Sue are meeting his son, Murray, to say thanks. Hi. Hi, pleased to meet you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the invite. No, thank you. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to meet you, yeah. actually. I'm just obviously very sad that your, your dad's not here, so we unfortunately we can't share our story yeah. with him. But That's yeah. it. I mean, we've got so much to thank your dad for, bless him, Don't because... You know, we wouldn't have had... We wouldn't have had the life that. that we have now, would we? So how many children did you have before? So we had Chris, nine. Sophie, Chloe, Jack, Daniel, Luke, Millie, Katie and James. We had nine. Wow. Yeah. And then we've had 13 since the reversal. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a definite that's success, a success story, success isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. We were saying before when we were driving here that we wonder if it's like a new world record, like for your dad, the most successful vasectomy reversal and for us to have yeah. had the most children from. Since it, yeah. I would love that plaque, definitely. <laughs> because I know, it, it would be, be really you know, something that, you know, lives in the legacy of my dad, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you have a difficult conversation about, right, we're going to go for it under the knife again for... Well, no, I mean, it, it was quite a simple and easy conversation, really, because we never really wanted to have the, the first, the snip in the no. first place, did we? But we thought, well, we know, we did. And then I remember coming home from having it done and it, we, we both just felt so... We really mm, regretted it. Yeah. Well, just dep it. almost depressed and miserable mm. that we'd had it done because we thought, that's it. You know, we can't have any more kids and well, we absolutely love having kids, mm. don't we? So. Noel and Sue wasted no time booking an appointment with Dr Wilson. James, when I just remember meeting him for the first time in an office and then the next we met him under the knife. <laughs> <laughs> and then coming out... I wasn't in any pain after, so I'm, I'm sure I had the painkillers and things, but oh, I remember yeah, the bruising yeah. was horrendous. <laughs> black, literally it black. Were oh, oh, you kept in overnight or anything? Or you... No, I went in in the morning and I came home about 8 o'clock at night. Oh, I do remember you had to wear Y fronts. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You, you could wear boxes, yeah, you had to wear like Y fronts, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah. And you hated together. Them, didn't you? But, yeah. Wow. But, you know, he was obviously very, very good at what he did, wasn't he? I think his success rate was quite high, though, for that, because we asked, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, he seems to have one of these blokes who a reputation follows him. And yet, when you saw him carving the beef on a Sunday, it was... He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good job, I didn't see that first one, No, it's fine. Yeah, it spent hours sharpening the knives to get it. <laughs> <laughs> to think James would have been the youngest child is bizarre to me. Now that I think right now, I, don't, I wouldn't have liked it, because, you know, we wouldn't have had, like, Ellie, Amy, this little one right here. The operation was a success. How long was it before your tenth child was born? Was it? Well, you had the reversal done. Yeah. And I think we were pregnant two months after having it done. To be honest, though, I didn't think it would work that quickly. Well, I'm still annoyed well, that my dad's not here to say. I know. <laughs> it had been lovely. Yeah. You yeah. mm -hmm. would have been made up to meet you both. Oh. To know the success that you you made of yeah. your lives and all your children. As well. It would have been so lovely to have met him. Yeah. It was really, really nice to meet him, wasn't it? And he was so proud of his dad, wasn't he? Was, he was, wasn't he? As much as we are, actually. You know, if it wasn't for him. Very grateful. Exactly.
Ten years and seven children after the trip to Mr Wilson... Hands up, girl! Sue was pregnant again, well, definitely... expecting her 17th. Oh, look! Ah! Proper thumb oh. sucker! I'm really happy about baby number 17. I'm looking forward to it, another boy. But sadly, this pregnancy did not end happily. Saturday, all day, he hadn't really moved. So we rung the hospital, we went in. And we, we just got there and she just put her little machine on and that it just showed that he'd gone. He'd died sometime that day on Saturday. <laughs> I'm struggling to cope with it. You go to sleep at night thinking of him. And then the, as soon as you wake up in the morning, he's just there again. I don't think this pain will ever go. The only thing I remember is that I walked out of my room one day and mum was just hoovering and then she'd just start crying. My mum and dad are very good parents. They are definitely always there when you need them. Supporting each other through hard times is essential for a strong family and a lasting marriage. It's definitely something we know we talk about. Alfie and obviously you know, the kids come with us when we go to see his grave and things like that. So even the ones that weren't born, yeah. you know, they understand it, who Alfie is. He's just always spoken about, isn't he? To be honest, I think this is one of the biggest things that's impacted yeah. our family. It's the worst like thing this. that I think we'd ever been through. I mean, and we've been through some pretty rubbish times, haven't we? But I th that was just the, yeah. the lowest point in our lives, mm. wasn't it? When he did pass, I think we all just got very close and was all there for each other. I think the way that we all kind of came together, it's a reflection of, you know, us as a family and how we've been brought up and our personalities and things, yeah. Just remember when we came home and we had to tell the kids then, didn't we? Mm. And everybody just getting upset. I just remember Luke sat on the windowsill halfway up the stairs, mm. just in tears. Because he's very sentimental, is Luke, isn't he? Yeah. Very loving as well. It was our decision to have a funeral for him. He's still our son at the end of the day, and we didn't want him to be treated any differently to anybody else. Alfie Radford, Noel and Sue's 17th child, was buried in a cemetery with views stretching across Morecambe Bay. It was a very harsh moment on the family because no one really expected that to happen. I need to take that teddy and wash it or swap it over. The family still visit regularly. Try and come up once a month, don't yeah. we? Bring him some fresh flowers. I always think this view is just so nice. Uh, yeah. In summertime, you just come up and just sit and just look at the view. You got a very good spot, didn't you? He did. Yeah, this is Alfie's memory box. Yeah. And his Christmas tree, bauble. This was his blanket. His little hat. Yeah. So small. So Alfie is wearing one of these, like a bracelet. He just had it round his arms, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Knew we were having a boy, but we didn't have a name. We couldn't decide, could no. we? No. <clears throat> and you just came straight out, didn't you, Alfie yeah. Thomas? So I would have been 13 at the time, I think. I just remember... I remember being on the stairs. Yeah. You don't expect it to happen, do you? I think we've just been so lucky, haven't we, up until, until Alfie. We mm. just took everything for granted, didn't you, that it doesn't happen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, don't get any easier, does it? No. no. We got everyone together, didn't we, when we got home? We were all in the kitchen <clears throat> um, and we, we told them. And I just remember you just having to leave the kitchen. That's when you went and sat on the stairs, wasn't it? And you were upset up there. So we sort of left you for a little bit and then went, you know, come see and comfort you. 
But uh, yeah, it did affect you a lot. It really did. I think 13 is when you are starting to understand a lot more things around you and just mm. life and understanding death along with that. Yeah. So I think when it's that close to home and it's your little brother, that hits hard, doesn't it? It's, it's difficult. It's not the way it should it? be, is it? No. Like us, we're not expecting to be burying our children before us, you know, so it's, it's all the wrong way around. It didn't feel right, obviously. You know, obviously having a lot of pregnancies that went really well and never had any problems, you, you feel quite bad for taking things for granted, you know, because especially since losing Alpha, you do realise that stillbirths, they happen. You know, it's something that should definitely be spoken about a lot more as well. Because I think before, like I say, we lost Alfie, you don't really realise just sadly how common it actually is, how many parents actually have to go through this, you know. Um, and, and actually, I think sometimes what makes it even worse is that you never have a reason why. I remember sitting in the consulting room and he, he said, you know, there, there's, there was nothing, there was absolutely no reason why. And he said, and some parents will find that really difficult to take. It's, um, it's hard, yeah.